Hello and welcome to the first of our Christmas devotionals for 2021. This year we'll be following three trees to do with Christmas past, present and future. First we start off with the tree of the knowledge and good and evil. So we begin in Genesis and verses 16 and 17 in chapter 2 and then chapter 3. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat it, you will surely die. Chapter 3 Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. But God did say, You must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realised that they were naked. So they sewed fig, tree, fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman put here with me. She gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate it. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because of this, Cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity, enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. To the woman, he said, I will greatly increase your pains in childbearing. With pain, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and dust you will return. Adam named his wife Eve, because she would become the mother of all the living. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the Tree of Life. So there's a few points from these passages that I want to bring out for you. Um, first of all, 
Adam and Eve are not only guilty of committing sin and disobeying God, but also they've caused separation between themselves and God because of that sin. See, there's this understanding of sin where sin is more than just being guilty of an act of wrongdoing. Sin is um, putting your identity in anything other than God. And so it causes this separation between Adam and Eve and God, and therefore us as humans and God. Second of all, is that Adam and Eve can't restore this relationship by themselves. And we can't restore that relationship by ourselves. You see, between verses 8 and 13 in chapter 3, there's this blame game going on. See, Adam blames Eve for him eating the fruit. And Eve says, well, the serpent deceived me and that's why I ate it. So nobody really wants to take responsibility because they know they can't pay the cost of eating this fruit. The cost of which is death. They can't escape that. They can't repay that. They can't restore the relationship because it's already broken because they've disobeyed God. They've caused that separation. But when it appears that everything has gone wrong, that the serpents won, there's a small glimpse of hope in verse 15. And may be caused to ask the question, is there someone who can restore that relationship? Verse 15 says this, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. See, there's this promise of resolution between man and God. Someone who can solve this problem, who can restore the relationship and close the divide and separation between us and God. So, as we look forward from Christmas past, there is this small glimmer of hope we find in the seed, in the offspring of Eve. Follow the videos to find out more.